What's going on everybody? How everybody doing today? I'm back to reading chapter 11 and it's called Responsibility of Citizens. You are a citizen of a country on earth and I hope you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Remember that your citizenship does not mean only that the government is responsible for taking care of you, but that you have, to have a responsibility to the government as well. It is a two-way street and the traffic goes both ways just as it is for you as a citizen of your earthly, earthly country. So also in the kingdom of God, are you held accountable to the government by means of your constitution? In this case, the Bible. You can be much happier and more productive citizen when you understand your responsibilities. Sad to say, many people do not want to shoulder their responsibility. They are glad God has saved them, but they, are, but they do not necessarily want to obey him. They do not understand that their obedience is a way of expressing their appreciation. Jesus Christ himself put it concisely. If you love me, keep me, keep my commandment, John 14, 15. They also fail to acknowledge that the rights that they enjoy as citizens, while they cannot be earned because they have been given as privileges, must be maintained maintenance through simple obedience to the law of the land. Remember that your citizenship does not mean only that the government is responsible for taking care of you, but that you have a responsibility to government as well. Submission to authority. When you become a citizen of a country, the laws of that country automatically becomes your law. As you submit to those laws, you submit to authority of the government. By submitting to the laws, you are free to remain in the country for a long time to move around the country for pleasure or business, and to enjoy the protection and privilege of citizenship. Break e even one of these laws, however, and your freedom will be court, um, court tell it. If you have transgression in a significant way, you may be incarcerated in prison. You may be deprived of your passport. You may be required to go through a long process before you can, before you can be reinstated as a free citizen. Jails are filled with irresponsible citizens who, didn't, who did not take responsible responsibility for keeping the laws. Citizenship manifests the contract between the government and the people. The key to enjoying the privilege that comes with citizenship is personal obedience to the law of the country. So these are the facts. If you are part of the country called the kingdom of heaven, one, you are a citizen with legal rights to, be, to benefits from the constitutional God. Number two, you have been personal right. You have personal rights and authority to exercise your power as a citizen through alignment with constitutional law. The last phrase is the clincher. The secret to wielding authority in the kingdom is aligning yourself with the law of the country. In other words, obedience. You obey God for the sake of your life here, now, and not just in order to get to heaven when you die. This is the kingdom lifestyle, and maintaining it is your responsibility. Authority is a good thing, and you never outgrow your need for it. Can you imagine a plant saying this to the soil? That is enough. You have been holding me down for all these years. I'm out of here. I am taking my roots with me. What would happen if a plant did that? It would die, sooner or later. The absence of authority brings self-destruction. Fish were created to submit to water. If a fish decides to move from under its authority, you do not need to punish it because it will die. The safest place for the fish is to be submissive. Surely you have seen a fish out of water. It gaps and flips and flops, trying as hard as it can to get back into the water. I know people like that. They tried this and that and wonder why nothing is working. When young people leave home too early, life can be very tough for a long time. It is the same principle. It is time to get back under authority. Part of submission to authority is patience. When we fly, sometimes I listen to the pilot talking on the radio. That man need to be completely submitted to authority. If the control tower tell him he cannot land yet, he goes into a holding pattern. His flight plan is very sufficient. He cannot, de uh, cannot deviate from it 12 inches in any direction without getting permission. He may not be able to see any other aircraft around him, but the people in the tower can see all of, all of them coming and going. In the same way, the authority over us keeps from crashing to each other, each other. If we obey their direction, freedom as has boundary, also always in the kingdom. If the king says you are free to eat from any other tree, do not eat from this tree. He has good reason. 
Disobedient is not the best way to find out about repercussions. Fish were created to submit to war. If a fish decided to move from under its authority, you don't, do not need to punish it because it would die. <coughs> Excuse me. Authority make power legal. We like to be around powerful people, but we need to ask ourselves, is this person power under authority? Power co combines ability and energy and force, while authority is the right and permission to use that power. Authority is the right to use power effectively, not because you could, but because you should. Authority make power legal. Therefore, authority is more important than power. Teenagers may have the power to leave home, but they do not yet have the authority to leave. A person may be very aggressive and loud in speaking, but oh, excuse me. But if they do not have authority, their words will not carry weight. Submission to authority is what makes a person effective. One time, a military officer came to see Jesus on behalf of his servant, who was lying at home, paralyzed and suffering. Jesus was willing to accompany him to his home in order to heal the servant. But much to his surprise, the man declined his offer. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say this to, to and I say this one, go, and he goes, and unto another, come, and he comes, and to my servant do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you believe, so let it be done for you. And his servant will heal that same hour. Matthew 8, Matthew 8, 8 to 10 and 13. Notice how the centurion addressed Jesus. He called him Lord, which indicated he respected his authority. Lord is a legal term, not a religious term. It means owner. In that culture, you can use the word for a king. See how many the centurion the Sutrian military experience gave him more complete understanding of the way authority worked. He was completely submitted to the Roman emperor and any other commander he ranked above him. He had at least a hundred soldiers who reportedly directed to him. The title Sutrium is related to the word century, which indicate 100. Probably he had been watching Jesus as he worked in the village. He may have seen him healing the sick, raising the dead, cashing out demons and more. Obviously, this man had, Jesus had power. Obviously, some higher authority was guiding him. He knew that a person's performance depended upon his obedience to the instruction for he been given. So he made the leap from his natural observation to faith. And Jesus, hey, what's up everybody? I apologize, I had my camera, it was messing up. But I'm back, finished reading chapter 11. I stopped all and said, Jesus was impressed with that declaring that the servant had already been healed and commended his decision to the people around him. A distant away, the paralyzed servant got up from his mat, healed and whole, without Jesus ever having to make the trip to his house. In the same way, if any of us want to experience God's best for, for our lives, we must get positioned properly, which is to say under authority and our entreaties, entreaties will be heard and answered. When you submit to God's authority, he shows you what is next. He helps you change your behavior. Righteousness exalt, exalt a nation. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those things shall be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. He wants us to seek first his kingdom and along with it, his righteousness. Righteousness is the same as submission to authority within the kingdom of God. By becoming righteousness, Righteous, you uphold the authority of the king, which in turn will uphold you. Righteousness exalts the nation. Proverbs 14, 34. This is nothing like other religions where submitting involves trying to keep your God happy. We are not bringing gifts to an altar or lighting incense and chanting in front of a statue. You are not contributing money or going through all the sorts of rituals to obligate your king to look after you. You are not appeasing authority. When you submit to God's authority, he shows you what is next. He helps you change your behavior. He even helps you seek more of his righteousness by remaining close to him. You guarantee that the authority of the government of the kingdom will be extended through you wherever you go. When you keep the law, you secure your God-given authority over the kingdom of darkness. 
Evidently, hell keep tracks with citizens of the kingdom, keep the law of God. Demons will know who you are if you abide in the kingdom of righteousness. You are in their computer. That means that you can cast them out with ease because they know you by your kingdom reputation. The laws to which you are submitting are heavenly laws, such as love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. Luke 6, 27, 28. So as you use kingdom love, which is powerful enough to extinguish the power of darkness around you, you keep yourself under the protection of God while fulfilling your assignment. You know that hatred will shut down your faith, and so will blind ritual. In Galatians 5, 6, Paul said, For in Christ, Jesus neither circum circumcision or uncircumcision avail anything by faith working through love. So you submit to the God of love even more completely to your own benefit as much as the benefits of those around you. You do not get things from God because, just because you ask. You get things from the government of heaven because you keep the laws of the country. It is not enough to talk about the laws in church on Sundays or at Bible study on Wednesday. You need to read the law book as often as possible and follow those laws faithfully. The minute you stop doing that, you start removing yourself from the king's protection. And a lot of people think that they can't get away with sin just because nobody's looking. That is atrocious, to say the least. Well, we come to God and say, God, heal me, but I'm still going to take drugs. Or we say, I'm going to sleep with that woman I'm not married to. But I want you to bless my business and pay my bills. We demand things while we are in disobedience. You will be a, you will be able to submit to someone's authority if you are able to trust and respect that person. Instead of breaking laws and hoping you get away with it, why not start obeying laws that you would, would not mind getting caught obeying? For example, see if you get caught loving your brother. See if you get can see if somebody can catch you paying your time. Let somebody catch you forgiving someone who hurt you or spot you committing an act of kindness. Gossip about someone who lived with his wife 42 years without strife. That would be a wonderful thing to gospel about. The law of this country are wonderful. Every one of them do right intentionally all the time and the king is going to bless you. How to submit to authority. Submitting to the king of kings often entails submitting to those he established in authority. You cannot submit to someone you are comparing yourself to or competing with, especially if you are interested in taking that person's position. By the same token, you cannot submit to someone if you are jealous of that person or if you distrust that person. It, it, does, it just does not work. A good king is willing to decease so one of his subjects can increase. In other words, a good king is willing to move over and let one of his citizens exercise power. A citizen can expect this to happen. He should not feel the need to push and shove to get the king attention, nor should he shoulder his in his way with a sense of entitlement. You will find it impossible to, to submit to someone if you think they are not as smart as you are, even when you tell yourself you are not influenced by such things. Naturally, authority does not match up with intelligence, and still less with educational achievement. But pride get in the way, and you cannot pull yourself lower than a person you want to contract all the time. Conversely, you will be submit, able to submit to someone's authority if you are able to trust and respect that person. You will indicate your submission by laying down your own agenda in favor of theirs. You will not feel the need to win an argument or negotiate an outcome. Instead, you'll find joy in performing, assign tasks, and asking for advice. Sometimes people say to authority figure, the Lord sent me to work with you. I want you to be my mentor. That is not submission. Those people just want to gain a measure of respect and fame in the eyes of others so they can take away some of your friends and followers. They have not, they have, they have got their ulterior motives all worked out. You will find it easy to submit to someone if you know in your spirit that God brought this person to your life. Your discernment will show you that this person will not take advantage of you and that he or she wants God's best for your life. You will be able to tell that your own effectiveness will improve if you are under this person's authority. Keys of the kingdom. The law of God are the keys of his kingdom. Abiding by his righteousness rulings, unlock the divine power that you need to live as a full vested citizen of heaven. Therefore, the more you can learn about his laws, the better. This is a spiritual reality with very practical implications. It changes a person's lifestyle into a kingdom lifestyle. And that lifestyle has art. art, art Artemon, 
If I said it right, automotive power. Look at the connection. I will give you the keys of the heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Matthew 16, 19. When you use the keys of the kingdom to lock and unlock, bind and unbind, you are not responsible for the exercise of power or for the result. You are, however, responsible to obtain and use the keys in the first place. By submitting to the law of the kingdom, you surrender to the authority of God, and that sets you free from the burden of making things happen. Heaven will back you up when you turn on the keys. Turn on, when you turn on, yeah, turn one of the keys. Citizens of the kingdom have a responsibility to learn the word of the Bible. We need to read it often because we tend to forget what it says. We need to read it more than often than we read the newspaper. When the devil attacked Jesus in the wilderness, his response came straight from scripture. He said, it is written, see Luke 4, 1 to 13. Those words were his keys to the kingdom of victory. And Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in that manner. John 5, 5, 19. He exercised the keys in the kingdom authority better than anybody before or yet. Yet he, true prince that he is, want nothing more than for the citizens of his kingdom to exercise those same keys. You do, you need to do only two things. First, seek the kingdom in order to get this into citizenship. And two, seek the kingdom righteousness in order to stay in it. In other words, stay aligned with the king. When you stay aligned with the king and his government, you will oblige him to take care of you. All of the promises in the constitution remain accessible to you as needed. Things that you have otherwise need to fight for will come your way with no sweat. That is that is why the scriptures read, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Having all these things added me, you will have a lot of unwanted things subtracted. Things like bad health, stress, and anxiety. You should not be living to make a living. Your priority should not be working and living to earn enough money to pay your bills. Jesus had another perspective on such things. He said, take no thoughts for them. See Matthew 6, 34. Instead of fretting about food and clothing and adding to the endless list of prayer requests, why not take his advice? The power of obeying laws. Righteousness means obeying the law of God out of love for him with his help. The word righteousness means all of these things, right positioning under authority, alignment with authority, right standing with authority, fellowship with authority, relationship with authority, correct standing with the regulation of authority, fulfillment of a king requirement. In essence, obedience to the law of any nation is a form of righteousness. That obedience keeps you in good standing within the country. With the keys of kingdom in your hand, you have access to the storehouse. As long as you keep the keys in your hand, you can go in and out as often as you want to. You know what it feels like to transgress a law or a rule, how it make your heart thump faster than when you see the police or another authority figure coming, even if that person does not know what you did, you have a private judge on the inside that make you feel guilty. You know what? You know that you are out of alignment with the authority because you have violated a regulation. The only solution to re-engage with your authority to get back under his legal protection. Seek to regain and maintain your alignment with the governing authority, and you will regain access to everything in the Constitution. Benefits of being a law-abiding kingdom citizen. Citizenship is the king to empowerment because it provides legitimate access to all the rights and privileges of a state. When you become a citizen of the kingdom, your citizenship is registered in heaven. See Ellipsian 2.19. Therefore, you can attain all the rights and privileges of heaven. With the keys of the kingdom in your hand, you have access to the storehouse. As long as you keep these keys in your hand, you can go in and out as often as you want to. This puts you in a particular category of citizen. And this is a powerful character for you as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Nothing is impossible. Jesus says so. See Matthew 17, 20. You can move mountain. Prayer itself does not get things done. Position in prayer get things done. Benefits of prayer. Jesus told a story about a widow who went before an ungodly judge. See Luke 18, verse 8. He was the worst judge around. A man who did not fear God and did not respect people. In those days, widows were destitute, they had nobody to look after their rights or their welfare. They were very vulnerable. The particular widow was no different from the others. 
except that she knew her right. She knew that she had rights to her claim before the judge, and she was unrelenting in her persistence. With that little window, with that little widow stood before the judge, she knew her stuff. The judge said no. She persisted in it. The judge said go away. She came back. She was not begging or weeping. She was making a request because she knew what her rights were. She knew the judge was required to render them to her. Most of think of the word judge and judgment in a negative sense. We think of judgmental statement and con consignment to prison or to hell. But when the, Bible, when the Bible said Jesus was a righteous judge, it means he is the judge who is always lined up corrected with the law of God, the one who gives you your rights. Train your mind to think of him as a judge who is a right giver. His job is to get you what is rightfully yours. The lawyer make the appeal, but the judge execute justice. The better you know what is written in the law book, the Bible, the better you will know what your rights are. I have been calling it the Constitution of the Kingdom because it tells you of all your rights, privilege, expectation, or uh, aspiration, and hopes. And it tells you what you need to do obtain and, uh, to obtain and uh, obtain them. If you know what the Bible says and you follow it, you will be a law-abiding citizen who will not lose their rights. In our experience, the Holy Spirit is the advocate Call counsel or chief lawyer before the throne of God. He know that the Bible was written by the inspiration of the Spirit. This guarantee that the Spirit know the legal documentation forward and backward because he abides inside of us after we become reborn sentences. He do not have to come before the judge at all alone. It would not matter how loudly you beg for mercy and cry out for help because God does not bless you because you cry. He bless you because you qualify. The Spirit bring the law to our remembrance and he make our appeal to Jesus, who always lived to an intercession for them. Hebrews 7, 25. He is praying for us, standing between heaven, judgment, and our sin. This is a setup for total success. How can you go into that courtroom and lose a case? Even more powerful, this intercessor is your brother. Before you get into the room, he is praying for you. He is offering his own righteousness on your behalf. When you walk in, you do not need to say anything. The Holy Spirit look at the Father and say, According to what he did, nodding towards Jesus, who took care of the man on the cross, and he, the appeal get finalized. Your advocate does not bring up your name. He brings the name of the king who paid the price for you, and you who have been praying for you ever since. You have the whole government backing you up. Prayer yourself does not get things done. Positioning in prayer get things done. The best preparation for prayer is your obedience to the law of God. Many times the reason God cannot help you is because you ask him last. Only by staying, staying aligned with the lawgiver and judge through the work of the Spirit and Son you, can you prevail. Have you noticed that you have been sent, that you just seen, you are unable to find boldness in prayer? When you break God's law, it shut down your prayer life. You have counsel your right to appear. If I regard inquiry in my heart and the Lord will not hear me, Psalm 66, 18, King James Version. The prophet Isaiah stated clearly, put your inquiry as separate from your God and your sins had hidden your face from him, so that he would not hear. Isaiah 59 second. It would not matter how loud, how loud you beg for mercy and cry out for help, because God does not bless you because you cry. He blesses you because you qualify. Believers have authority in prayer as long as they maintain their size of the covenant with the king. The covenant is a legal agreement. You do not have to go before him with their acts or historical any more than a lawyer would go for a judge that way. You just have to be a citizen in good standing, and the judge will hear your case. Did that sound too legalistic to you? Did you think of that Jesus coming meant the end of the law? I have news for you. He is coming meant for the law have fulfilled in him. Christ is the accumulation of the law, so there be there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Romans 10, 4. Everybody in the kingdom is equal. The king does not listen to the special interest group, and nobody has to wear a special kingdom regala to his attention. Any citizen of the kingdom has equal access to the king. He will act be on behalf of anyone as soon as he sees that Jesus is standing down on that person's behalf. Benefits of access. Let's say I am multi-billionaire and you are my son or daughter. You ask me for your inheritance early. I am generous, so I give you a billion dollars. And I ask you to set up a bank account for it. If it, it is a drop in the bucket for me anyway, since I have more than 30 billion in my own bank account. When your sister said, "Dad, I don't want my own bank account," I am glad I would. I glad I am glad because I would rather give her access to mine. 
It is the better choice. I will give her access to my account. She can write checks whenever she needs to. She will never run out of money, will she? That is, this is the same as God's provision for his citizens. No wonder Jesus told his disciples not to take any luggage when they set out to preach and heal the sick. Take nothing for the journey. No staff, no bag, no bread. No money, no extra shirt. Luke 9.30. He will send his provision all along the way because they have access to his camp. Righteousness being in the right position with regard to the government of heaven is what guarantee your assets. My first child cannot go to the bank and demand funds for my account. Neither can you go to the throne room of God and start claiming things that you are not qualified to claim. Citizenship and right standing give you rights and justice. Righteousness being in the right position with regard to the government of heaven is what guarantee your excess. Many people think that righteousness means staying clear of big sins. You know, don't rob a bank, don't murder anybody. But righteousness covers obedience to every little law. It also means do not lie or deceive people. Do not be jealous or envious. Do not criticize or judge. Do not murmur or complain. One murmur can shut the whole government down as far as your asset and concern. No one of the dumbest things a person can do is get up in the king's face and start fussing at him. That is called rebellion. The only remedy is repentance, humble submission. Do not forfeit your asset to God. He loves you and he has given you the whole kingdom. The eye of the Lord are, are on your righteousness, and his ears are attentive to their cry. Psalms 34, 15. Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Psalm 11, um, 110, 1. In all your ways submit to him, he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 6. Now it shall pass, come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, excuse me, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today. That the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of your Lord. Deuteronomy 28, first, second. Come like a child. We complicate our lives so much, Jesus make it simple. One time he took a nearby child, used him to illustrate his point, and how to enter the kingdom and set in the kingdom. Then Jesus called a little child in and set in him in the midst of him and said, Assuredly I say to you, unless you are converted and become a little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as a little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, second 4. Do you see our primary responsibility as citizens of the kingdom is to remain childlike, like childlike, to stay close to God, do what he does say, trust him, stop worrying. Your daddy is taking care of you right now, morning, noon, and night. You were, you were not born to bad, you were born to collect. You were born to have access to endless supply because your father owned everything. The enemy, of, the enemy of kingdom life is being an adult. Being an adult will kill you because you take on responsibilities of the universe and you are not equipped to do that. You are a child. Get used to the idea. God is your father. Jesus is your big brother. You thought that being a mature citizen meant taking on more responsibility, but in the kingdom it means taking on less. Adults have to calculate, analyze, and explain everything before they act. Adults do not believe in something until they see it. Adults need a reason before they will believe anything. Children, on the other hand, are quick to believe, innocent of strategic thinking, pillable, pillable. They have they put unquestioning trust in those over them. They are not all impressed by status or money. When they meet a billionaire on the street, they think he's just another old man like their grandfather. Children do not own much of anything, so it is not hard for them to give up things. You never heard a child fretting about having enough money because somehow always take care of them. They take things for granted, that is okay. When I was a child, we had 11 children in the house and my father was not wealthy. It never occurred to me or my brother and sister worry about where our next meal would come from. It just happened. Kingdom citizens soon learn how to trust like a child. Our father supplies our needs from the most amazing direction. Who, for example, when whoever having thought that God's safety deposit was in the mouth of a fish. When the, deposit had to, when the disciple had to, take, to come up with tax money, Jesus directed him, Go to the lake, throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open his mouth, and you'll find a four drama coin. Take it and give it to them for your tax and yours. Matthew 17, 27. You are not born to bag. You were born to collect. You were born to have access to an endless supply because your father owns everything. You are a family member, a member of his household. You are a citizen that give you relationship status and also legal status. 
Your deposition with God gives you position with God. When you come like a child to the threshold of the kingdom, it is not easy to get through the door. God created you to be a citizen of the kingdom. Do your part and you will never regret it. Every citizen must make his or own response to the requirement of citizens. Nobody can obey the law for another person. It cannot stop in the real life for you. You have to do it yourself. I cannot pay your taxes. I cannot align myself with the laws of the kingdom on your behalf as much as I might want to. Obedience to the law of the kingdom is a proof and a demonstration of true love. The king is coming back someday and he will decide who's been following his ways. He will not be impressed with the biggest churches or the longest list of academic degrees. He will look at the hearts of his citizens. Did you love me? Did you love others? Did you listen and obey my word? Those who can answer yes will dwell in the kingdom of all eternity. When the Son of Man come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of all his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as the shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. The king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the king, before prepare for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 25, 31-34 Sheep or goat, I know which group I want to be a part of. And I hope I will meet you there. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's chapter 11. I finished reading. I had to split it up from last night to today because I had to make some room on my phone so I could finish recording chapter 11. And I want all y'all to get caught up with all the videos I posted from 1 through 11. Because tomorrow I'll be on the final chapter of chapter 12 of this book. And like I said, we all sin and come short, short of God. Even yesterday, you know, it, it no matter how big or small the sin is, we all sin. But we got to pray and stay on the course. It ain't easy, but we got to. We got to obey God's law. We got to. We ain't got no choice, but we got to do it. If we want to be blessed financially and everything. If we want to make it to heaven. Because that, you know, and, and being a human being, you know, it's hard because you... You deal with stuff at work, outside of work, everything. You got bills, all that stuff. But we got to learn not to stress and just give it to God and just pray. And learn not to, to complain or fuss about anything. Because that also cuts cut your blessing too. Always fussing and complaining, you know. Because I look at myself, you know, not to fuss and complain. Just looking the good and everything, the positive. That's what everybody got to do. No matter what you're going to, always look at the positive. But like I said, tomorrow I will finish chapter 12. And like I said, y'all look at the other videos I did of this book. Y'all, so y'all get caught up and get prepared for the last chapter tomorrow. Hope y'all have a great day and hope y'all have a great first Monday tomorrow. And y'all have a good night.